In this video, we're going to learn some of the basics to model a remote control airplane in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we are going to start talking about using both forms and surfacing tools, but we're not going to apply it to cars, we're going to apply it to airplanes. So I had a request come in asking about how to model the intake portion of this RC jet. So this is an interesting question because it requires us to think about which tool set is most valid for this approach. Now, in my opinion, the surfacing tools are going to be better to get that design, and there's a few reasons why. So on this, the cockpit area is actually removable, and it's a little bit hard to see in some of these images, but basically what we have is this upper section that comes off, and then the intake section is actually going inside underneath this piece. So this area here comes off all the way up until about the front here. So this presents an interesting challenge because that geometry would be possible, but very tricky with forms. And what I mean by tricky is because we would have to have a lot of edges to control that and ultimately it would end up being two surfaces. And because we need to have two different form bodies or two form surfaces, it would be hard for us to get those edges to line up and carry tangency. Now there are some workarounds where we could use the uh, option to turn the timeline off and then we could actually have a converted form body as a surface and use that to drive a new form body. But again, that gets pretty advanced and you have to have a really good reason to do something like that. And I just don't think we have it with this model. So we're not gonna completely create this, but we're gonna talk about a few different aspects. Mainly creating the general body shape. We're gonna talk about how to make the nose cone. And we're gonna talk about how to get this feature where the upper portion has this intake that leads into and in, ultimately into the turbine intake. So this model here, is the Rebel Max, and you can go to the description of the video. You can download the data set, which just has these stock images from the website where you can purchase this. And I also have a link in the description for the site that sells these. Now, I'm not affiliated with them at all. Um, I actually, I, I don't have an RC airplane at all, but I do wanna make sure that we understand we're not modeling this entire thing. And the actual production version, you can go to the link in the description and you can check it out. So now that we got all that out of the way, to get started, I have no blueprints of this thing, but there is a pretty unique top view where they're holding it basically sitting on the nose. And this is gonna give us a good starting point for figuring out the shape of the fuselage. Now, one interesting thing that happens on this design is the cockpit area actually has sort of a fillet to it. It's not a smooth blend in. And when we look at it from the side, you can go ahead and you can kind of see that there is not a crease there, but there is like a tighter fillet there and it sort of leads forward and that geometry blends away. So without actually having one of these in front of me, it's really hard to make the decision on how this geometry should be made, but that's an important aspect that we should think about. Uh, another thing to think about is the wings themselves and the tail. These are generally going to be easier to do after the fact with surfacing tools rather than try to build them into the main body as a form. And it's simply just for the nature of the way in which you design the wing shape. We're not gonna get into aerodynamics, but generally you would create some sections and you would loft the wing shape. And we're, again, we're not gonna go that far down this path, but it's just important to note that I would not try to create those with forms because again, we'd have to have a lot of control in edges and it would just generally make the rest of the shape hard to create. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Again, if you wanna follow along, there is a file in the description of the video that you can start exactly where we're at. We're gonna begin with a form body. Now, when we think about which form shape is going to be the best for this design, you might want to think about going to something like a sphere because it does end at a single vertice at the very nose, but that's gonna be harder for us to control. And we're actually gonna do the nose cone after the fact as a surface with a loft. So for me to start a design like this, I would start with a cylinder because it's gonna be the closest representation to the body. I'm gonna start it on this front plane and in this case, it's left. And I'm just gonna draw it approximately the size that I think it is. And then I'm gonna go back to the top view. Now, 
I'm gonna make sure that it goes all the way the full length of the fuselage. And I'm actually gonna decrease the number of edges that are in here. I only want the start, the end, and the mid. It's gonna be much easier to control the general shape with fewer edges. So once we're happy with that, we can scale it down. For example, the diameter, we can make it smaller or bigger. I'm gonna go down to 12 and see if that gets us a little bit closer. Well, let's go even smaller. Obviously, I'm not modeling this to scale. Uh, if I was, it would be quite a bit bigger. That's a, a full-size person standing behind this thing. But again, it's just for the purposes of understanding the tool set. So I think that looks pretty close. I'm not going to worry about the back, so I'm going to end it right about there. And again, the front we're going to end up taking care of. So I'm going to say uh, I want to turn on symmetry, mirror symmetry. And let's see, let's go for the width. And that's gonna give us that green line right down the middle, which means everything we do on one side, we'll do on the other. Ultimately, when we get to surfacing, we're gonna split this thing up and just work with half of it. But for right now, that gives us a good starting point. Now what I wanna do is double click one of these edges on the front, which will grab the entire loop. I'm gonna to go to modify and I'm gonna pull this back because again, we're gonna build the nose cone later. And then I wanna scale it down. But here's the trick, we have to scale it down in all three directions. So I'm gonna grab that center icon and I'm gonna to start to scale this down. You can see I'm gonna pull the cursor up and it's gonna to start to create that nose cone shape. Now the fuselage on this is not truly round. There are some differences, but that again, that gives us a good starting point. We can view it from the top and it gets us pretty close. I'll double click this one. I'm gonna scale it again outward just to get it pretty close. And then the back one here and make sure that we are in a top view and I'm gonna scale that down. You'll note that we are working in smooth display. You can use your keys on the keyboard, Alt and one and Alt and three to go back and forth between smooth and box. You can also go to your selection options at the very bottom and change the display mode. It's a good idea for us to work in smooth display for this because we are working with a, a small number of edges and we are really concerned with the smooth shape. So that gets us pretty close to the general shape. What we don't have at this point is the, the bulge for the cockpit. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because again, it has that sort of fillet or crease on the backside. And if we bring back another image, maybe this third image here. So you can see that the, the general shape here sort of has that crease. But if we want to include this in our design, then the way that we have to do that is by adding some more edges to help control it. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna double click on this edge here, go to modify, insert edge, and I'm gonna put one right there in the middle. Now, remember that when we're using the in insertion mode simple, it's not going to care about the shape, it's going to simply put that edge exactly where you tell it. If we use exact, however, it is going to maintain or preserve the current shape and it's gonna add in potentially more edges depending on how it needs to do that to create the shape. So if I say exact and say, okay, you can see here that it did add that in and it kept the exact shape. If we go back and forth between box and smooth display, you'll notice that this mid edge tends to move back. And that's okay. It doesn't necessarily uh, bother the shape in this case if it moves back, but it did give us this front or this extra section here that we can now manipulate. So we're gonna use modify edit form. I'm just gonna to start to pull that up. And notice that I am pulling the edges and not the vertices at the top. And this is because I don't wanna just create a pinch or a crease at the very top. But once I get it approximately right, what I'm gonna do is scale it vertically, which is going to stretch those edges out. And this is gonna give me more of a point at the top. So that looks pretty good. Again, we're just looking at general shapes here. We're not trying to perfectly replicate that, but this does present another interesting problem. If we look at this from the front, we need to decide how wide this thing needs to be. And in order to get that, I wanna keep the front nose cone area pretty round, but I want to make the midline a bit wider. So I'm gonna double click on this edge and double clicking the mouse wheel will get us centered. It's gonna be based on these images, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. But now what we wanna do is we can scale horizontally or in the Y direction to widen that out and see if that gives us the shape that we need. 
We can also widen out the cockpit area. You don't have to look at it straight on. You can do this from any view, as long as you grab the correct manipulator. That looks pretty good. So that's going to be the basic shape. Now on the actual plane, the, uh, the back end is going to be open because it's obviously where the, the jet exhaust is going. So again, we don't really have references. I would imagine that it would probably taper down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is double click this back edge. I'm going to go to modify edit form, hold down alt and extrude this back. And then I'm going to scale it down just a little bit and say, okay. So that allows me to have that slight taper at the back. Again, it's probably not super accurate, but without actually having one of these or having a ton of pictures, then it's kind of the best that we're going to do. So once we're happy with the general shape, I'm going to select finish form. And now I want to build out the nose cone. I'm going to do this with surfacing tools. I'm going to go ahead and do a save as for this design. And that, that way I just keep the original sort of untouched, but uh, obviously you guys save as you go along as well. But this gives us at least a good starting point. We have a nice smooth surface here. And you can see that there aren't really any uh, edges except for this one here. It has to have some sort of seam on the body. But that's a great starting point, which means that when we split this thing in half, we'll keep the right half as we're looking at it now. But before we do that, we want to build out the nose cone. And to do that, we're going to start a sketch. We're going to start on, this case, the XZ or the front plane. And I'm going to use Create. Project include project. And I want to bring this entire front edge. We could also bring just this vertex here, which is right in the middle. But uh, really, it depends on where that edge ended up being. In this case, what I want to do is I want to bring the entire edge and not the vertex. And the reason for that is because now I can use my line tool. I can find the midpoint of that line and just draw something out to the left and hit escape. This line needs to be construction, so I'm going to turn it into construction for my sketch palette. And this is going to be the point at where the nose cone ends. So if we look at our top picture, that actually comes out pretty far. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out pretty far. Then I'm going to finish the sketch. From here, the tool that we want to use is a loft. So we're going to loft from this open edge to that point. Now, point was already selected because it still was selected from the sketch, but this way we can go to that point and we can say point tangent and we can also say curvature continuous with the surface edge that we selected. Now you can see that that point is actually a little bit high. That's okay for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into that sketch and I'm going to take out this perpendicular constraint. It might be kind of hard but what you can do is you can hold down the left mouse button and select perpendicular and hit delete on the keyboard. This lets me pull this edge down so it's no longer perpendicular and we can finish it and let it regenerate that. It looks like it's gonna have to come down a bit more. So what I wanna do is I wanna edit that sketch one more time and figure out where this point needs to be. So really what we're doing is we're carrying the curvature down here and we're wrapping back around to the bottom. So that's probably a little bit closer, but that's the general process that you would go through to sort of create that nose cone. And what you can do is you can modify features inside of the loft itself. So for example, the point, if we want to reduce the tangency, I can set that to 0.5 and it'll narrow it down, which means that it doesn't have nearly as much influence, makes a tighter cone there. And then for the curvature continuity, we could increase this if we wanted to, uh, to let's say 1.5, which means that it's going to use the curvature or at least the radius of curvature here and push it further down. Now there is diminishing returns when you do something like this. You can get to a point where the geometry is, is just really bad, but in this case, it looks pretty good. Before I go too much further, I'm gonna stitch these two pieces together, which makes them one surface. If we expand our bodies, we have one surface body made up of two faces. And then we're gonna use trim and I'm gonna trim with this plane. So I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button, select XZ, and then I wanna remove the left side of this. And the reason we're doing this is because it's symmetric, so it's much easier for us to just work with half of it 
than to have to constantly build both sides of it. So working with half is going to be an easier option. Let's go ahead and do another quick save here. So again, the point of this video is not to model the entire airplane, but it's to look at a couple of tricky features. So the next thing that we're going to handle is we're going to handle this uh, sort of cockpit crease. Now, this one is tricky because, again, it has that sort of like tighter transition here. So the cockpit actually changes direction, comes up, but it's smooth here at the front. Now, without really knowing what this looks like, without all of the the sort of livery on it, the painted cockpit area. I don't really know where the transition for that changes. I would imagine it's smooth here up front and then it sort of uh, changes right here where we've got our intake. Uh, that would be my guess just based off of like design language and how I would possibly do that. So what I'm gonna assume is that where that cockpit transition is, where the intake scoop is, is opening, is where that crease is going to start. So this means that we can do one of two things, or I mean really one of a couple things. So we could create the, the split now. So basically split where this thing is attached and then start to build out the inside pieces. Or we could kind of figure out how to make that, that fillet or that crease disappear using something like a variable fillet. And again, this is where it gets kind of tricky depending on what you actually have as a resource. Because we have these images as a resource and we don't have a really sort of close, uh, you know, close up picture with the exception of some of the ones that are in here, you can see that there is sort of this detail, this reveal lip there. And that's oftentimes what you're gonna find when you have fiberglass parts that fit together, they're not ever going to fit together perfectly. So you're gonna to have to create those like little details, those little lips or reveals. Now this view here is looking down and forward. So there are some uh, controllers, some batteries in here. And what you see is this is where the intake starts to sort of roll in. And what we don't see here is that crease or that fillet that we saw in uh, this picture here. So you can see here, it sort of carries back, but we didn't have it in that other picture. So again, it's kind of hard. We have to sort of think about what we would do if we were designing this from scratch and how that would look. So I'm going to assume that that crease starts where this opening is, and then the rest of it is smooth, how we have it drawn now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to split this up using some surfacing tools. So, I'm gonna use a straight line and I'm gonna assume the cockpit is sort of going down at this angle and then coming up here. And this is gonna be sort of the main area. Now, again, we're just sort of roughing this out, but then we, we need to think about where that intake scoop is coming in. So that intake scoop is somewhere around the middle here and it's coming down and then it's going forward and it's gonna connect back up to here. I'm gonna make these two lines collinear and essentially what we have is, is going to be the cockpit area, which is this line to this line, that's gonna be um, coming down here and then back. And, and that's, that's gonna be how this thing gets broken up. So we need another line here that's sort of following this intake tract. And then that's gonna come up and I'm just gonna go ahead and connect that back to here. So, in reality, what we have is this line to this line, down here, over to here, and back up, and all of this gets removed as one piece. The catch to this is this is the point where we start to have that fillet where it bulges out because of the intake, and before there, theoretically, it's smooth, and then we've got sort of this intake opening that happens a little bit lower. It's sort of parallel. Uh, these two are sort of parallel, but it, it kind of happens a little bit lower. So in this mock-up phase, which is kind of hard to see with the body, but in this mock-up phase, everything sort of from these lines here is going to get split, but we are also going to want to split that sort of front and rear. I'm going to go ahead and just extend this out. So that way, this back section we can create a cockpit that sort of flares out here and gives us that fillet that wraps around. So very, very tricky geometry. At a first glance, it looks really easy, 
but once you start to dig into it, it's actually pretty complicated. So before I go too much further, what I wanna do is I wanna use the break option. So I wanna break this line up right in the middle and hit escape. That way when I'm selecting lines to use as split tools, I can come down and I can go back and, and come back over here. Let's deselect that. So that way it gives me, that's actually the cockpit area that we're gonna have. And then this is the intake scoop area that's sort of coming in. We might wanna break those lines up as well. I'm gonna go ahead and just snap that there. We'll use modify break, break that, and break that. It messes with the constraint. So a lot of times you'll see that we no longer have like a parallel or a collinear constraint. I'm not really too worried about it with this design. If you were looking specifically at certain aerodynamic aspects, then you would wanna pay a lot closer attention to things like dimensioning the lines because these are still free to move about and it could potentially mess everything up. But for us, what I wanna do is I just wanna have something where I can create the cuts and splits that I need. Again, going back to this line. So that surface or that edge will be able to trim or split the rest of the surfaces up. So let's go ahead and see how that looks just to get us started. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna create some extrudes and partially I wanna create an extrude uh, just because I can use that later. I am gonna turn off chaining because I don't want some of these edges. I do want this one, but then I wanna pull this sort of out. So that surface can be used to trim, but it's also going to be a good sort of landing surface for some of the other things that we need to do. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna bring that sketch back. And remember that this back edge here, it's gonna be kind of hard to visualize, but that back edge there is also going to be where we want to split this section and start to make it wider for that intake scoop. And then we have our intake scoop section as well. And this is not necessarily going to uh, it's not really going to work out quite the same. So what I want to do here is I want to take this entire closed area and just get rid of it completely. I want to trim it away. So we can use our trim tool. We can use split body or split face. Sometimes you'll find that trim doesn't work on your specific geometry. And a good backup to that is split body. It just means that you'll have to delete one of the bodies after the fact. So the body to split is our surface. And our tool, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and come in and manually select these edges. So we can kind of see that it's extending through. It's gonna go on infinitely, but once we zoom out, we can see it's extending through. I'm gonna say, okay. And now it's sort of left me with this piece here. Now, the reason that this is kind of helpful is sometimes we can take that, we can use move and push it to another location. So if you're trying to make some inset geometry, just simply moving it back will then give you the references you need to, let's say, loft from this front edge to that back edge. So that can, that can kind of give you that intake shape. It's not gonna work for this design per se. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and rename some of these main body. I'm gonna call this moved body. I don't need it right now, but just so we have it. And then these are our extrudes that we're gonna use to split things up. So this is a great time for us to do a quick save, make sure that we're not losing anything. I know that I'm moving the model around quite a bit, and that's kind of the nature of working with designs like this. When you're working with things that have complex shapes in 3D, you're gonna end up rotating them and moving them a lot to get sort of that display you're looking. I also like to make sure that I'm using perspective with ortho faces, so that way when I'm looking at the front or the side, there is no perspective, but as soon as you rotate it, it starts to add that perspective, which gives it the realism where we really need to, to see what's going on. So now we can think about sort of breaking the fuselage up into smaller pieces. So again, we're gonna use split body, bodies to split, and my splitting tool is this extrude. I don't need to extend it since it's already gone through, and what this gives me is the main body, which is this piece here. And we kept this little section here because it perfectly matches with the cockpit area. And then we have the cockpit area. So this is gonna be the part that's completely removable. And what we need to do is we need to make this a little bit wider 
and create that crease or that flare that goes around the back. So again, this is not an easy modeling problem. It's something that does take a good bit of time. Let's go ahead and do another quick save. And this is a good challenge time. So if you are trying to learn to create you know, airplanes or if you're looking to create anything with surfaces really, then being able to do some trial and error and figure things out is important. So I suggest at this point, you pause and you try to figure out how to split this up and create that crease on your own. We've already created the sketch to help us out. We've already created the extruded surfaces to help out with splitting some of this up. But why don't you go ahead and take this, this moment here to pause and see if you can get this split up so we can create that crease and we can widen this intake opening here. Um, so give that a shot, see what you can do keeping in mind that we've got these pieces of uh, surface that are gonna be important to us. So we've got the complete border that we wanna keep in terms of smoothing and uh, transitioning into the rest of the fuselage. But everything inside of here, we can kind of hack up and begin to work with. So give that a shot, see what you can do, and then come back and we'll progress from there. All right, so hopefully you got a little bit uh, done. But what we're going to do from here is we're going to use split body and we're going to split the upper portion of the fuselage using these two lines here. Now, you'll notice that it's trying to grab quite a bit. I don't want all of this, but it's kind of a closed chain. That's OK because it's not really going to cut anything extra. But if that was a problem, you might want to go and create a new sketch that has just the lines of interest. We'll say OK. And now what that's done is it's given us this little piece here, and we have this piece here. This is not quite the end of the story, unfortunately. Um, so what we need to do is we need to extend the cockpit back, and we're going to be creating that sort of harder edge here. But at the same time, we also need to extend this piece out. We need to start to create the intake out, but where it meets the rest of the fuselage, we want it to stay the same. So the way that we could do that is create yet another split. So another sketch, side plane here. I'm going to bring back this sketch and use P on the keyboard to project. I'm going to bring this edge and this lower edge here and say OK. Then I can hide sketch 9 and use offset. So with offset, what I want to do is I want to offset this in some distance. And again, we're not actually looking at real numbers because one millimeter is pretty small, but we're just looking at the process. So I'm going to use my line tool to extend this out, make sure it goes all the way through. And what this is going to allow me to do is to split this up in yet another piece. We could have done a little bit of planning and made some additional splits earlier on. But uh, you know, this is essentially what this is doing is it's giving us all of the little pieces that we need. So now you notice that these two are still connected. I'm going to use unstitch and say OK. And now that will break them up. They were still connected because they still intersected at a single vertex or a single point. And we want to make sure that they are separate. This piece is going to stay the same. This piece is going to stay the same. So I'm going to put keep after it. And then this piece here, I'm going to put uh, keep after it as well, just temporarily, because once we stitch everything back together, the names are going to change. So this just lets me know that this piece is going to stay exactly how it is. This piece is going to stay exactly how it is. It, with the exception of the fact that we need to use it to drive curvature. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be carrying this edge up and over, and then it's going to give us that sort of creased section. So this is a pretty tricky challenge. This is a, a not an easy thing to do. It might look very simple when you just look at a picture of the plane, but that is, uh, it's a difficult surfacing task. So by no means is this an easy task. So I want to make sure that we understand that we will get back to creating this piece here, and we're actually going to use some of the extruded surfaces uh, as potential sort of shutoffs or, or stopping points. But that is really not the priority right now. The priority is to get the rest of this working.
So when we think about a challenge like this, I like to think about it in a couple different parts. If we are going to blend the new surfaces together with surfacing tools, then we should be very mindful of how we create them. I am going to use probably fillets with tangency or curvature continuity. Um, it's a little bit easier. It's not as not quite as advanced as trying to get everything to blend together. But um, just keeping that in mind, it's it's kind of important. Remember that we don't this edge right here doesn't need to still match up with this one because this is where the intake scoop is going. This is going to end up carrying in uh, and, and carrying underneath the intake scoop. So probably a good thing to do would be to create another sketch, yeah, yet another one. And we're going to take this line and project it with P on the keyboard. And then we're gonna add another line and just carry that line out parallel. And the reason that we wanna do that is because after the fact, after we change this, the shape of the surface fundamentally, we're not gonna be able to go back and grab and, and continue that geometry on, and we might need to. So what I wanna do is I want to just grab a piece of it now, and I'm gonna do a modify split face. I'm gonna split this face using this as my split tool. And the reason I wanna do a split face is because it still keeps this as one body, but now it allows me to go into create offset and select that little piece. We need to turn off chain selection to be able to get one face. We're gonna offset it zero millimeters, making a copy. And I'm just gonna call this face copy for now and hide it. So that way, when we get to building the rest of this intake shape underneath here, we have a copy of that edge. Now in Fusion 360, a lot of times you can select an edge and hit delete and it'll patch the surrounding geometry. It's not really critical for us in this case because we are gonna change, fundamentally change the shape. But now it's at the point where we need to decide, are we gonna make the cockpit first or are we going to make the rest of the geometry? Now, either option is fine, but we have to keep in mind that this edge here is still going to be an edge. We still wanna maintain that edge because essentially what we're doing is we're just increasing the arc of the cockpit earlier and then we're gonna be flaring out from there. So we're gonna make it a tight transition, but we still are gonna have that edge. So what I suggest we do is we just create the top piece first. And again, we're gonna do a sketch. I'm gonna use P on the keyboard to project that, that midline there. And I also wanna project this little section here. That's where we're going to be attaching to. Keeping in mind that we don't need tangency here because we actually want a sharper transition. I'm gonna use a fit point spline, just go between these two points. Then I'm gonna use curvature continuity between this spline and this line here. You, you can see that it essentially gives us the same curve, right? Nothing really looks different. There is a slight difference here, which means that it will allow us to get some sort of harder transition here. If we want it to be more drastic, we'll hit escape to get off our constraint tool. And we can actually pull this out extending the curvature a bit, but because we're using curvature continuity here, it actually isn't going to help us too much. But what we can do is go to the back and we can actually increase this just a little bit, just to get a slight bit more shape. Once we have that, I'm gonna finish the sketch. I am going to extrude that out away, just kind of as a helper. And this edge or this surface right here, I don't need anymore. So I'm gonna select it, right click and select remove. Now remove will put a feature in the timeline, which means we can always go back and bring it back if we need it. We can delete or suppress that, but that way we just don't have that extra body that we no longer need. And if there are any other bodies that we don't need like this one or this one, we could get rid of them. I'm not 100% sure we don't need this yet because we could use it to fill in some areas. So I am gonna leave those. We also have that original moved scoop, which we don't really need, but I'm gonna leave it for now. And now what we wanna do is we wanna fill in this area. Now, this is going to be tricky because we don't want tangency with this edge, but we do want curvature continuity and tangency here. So we're gonna give this a shot using patch. Um, gonna have to turn off enable chaining because these are not all connected. And 
we want to go to this edge, and you'll notice that it's not letting me select this. Now, sometimes when that happens, it might be because that is not touching, if it's not a closed loop. Um, if that is the case, sometimes what you can do is you can try to stitch them together. Now, even though they are not technically connecting edges, so sometimes they can be stitched just at those points if you increase the tolerance. This case is not working. Another option we could have is to extend that out a bit further. Um, again, it may or may not be uh, it may or may not be a valid solution. But when you run into these problems, then we can always try to use that curve. So let's try this patch with the curve. And again, you can see that it's not letting me select those edges. So I'm going to go back to the sketch and edit. And the projected reference should be fine. It should completely match what we're trying to do here. Uh, if it's not for some reason, if it doesn't have that coincident constraint, then it could be a problem. But I cannot see any reason why that should not work. So another thing that we could try is to use other tools. Now, because we have a three-sided patch, essentially, uh, the other tools are going to have problems with what's called degenerative points, but we could still try. So I'm gonna to try to give loft a shot. And I'm gonna loft from this curve to this curve, and I'm gonna use this as a guide rail. Now, when we use a guide rail, You'll notice that because the guide rail is a sketch, it's not giving me a tangency option. So what we should do is hide the sketch and bring that surface back and see if it'll let me use that. And then we can use tangency. And that's important because when we mirror this thing, we don't want a seam there. We want it to be smooth. On profile two, this is where it's going to get tricky because we want curvature continuity and you can see that it's failing. If we try tangency, it'll be okay. And Essentially, the problem is in the corner because we have tangency here and we're trying to drive this with curvature continuity. We could potentially try to do curvature for both of them, but I found that it oftentimes doesn't work and the results are, are not great. So what we're looking at here should be pretty good. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to hide that extrude. And we should have a very slight edge now. If I hide my edges using Control and 4 on the keyboard, you can see there is a very slight shadow there, which means that we don't have a smooth transition. That's because we don't want it. So that looks pretty good. It's pretty smooth up front, but it kind of goes to a not smooth transition in the back. Uh, let's do a real quick save. And now we can work on building out this section. And again, this section is going to flare away and then it's gonna come back down here because we wanna maintain that smooth transition with the rest of the fuselage. So essentially what we're doing is from this edge or that point right there, we're gonna to start to come out and down into here. And the way that we can make that work is by building a plane that attaches to three points that are there. And that might give us a good way for us to sort of build that shape. Another way that we could do this is with a projected curve. So I would likely use the plane method, but just to show the projected curve, let's go ahead and go that route. So I'm gonna create a sketch. From the side, I am gonna use P, and I'm gonna project the end points for where I want that line. Now, I know that this is a line because that's how we drew it. If that wasn't a line, then you might need to use a curve and actually project that curve. But since I know that we used a line to cut this, that's exactly what I'm gonna use. So from the side, that's what I want that piece to look like. Now from the front, in this case, the left view, I'm gonna create another sketch. And this time I want to make sure that I project the points that I'm interested in. Again, this point here and this point here, but I also need this edge. And the reason I need that edge is because again, I'm trying to drive tangency. I want it to be a smooth transition. So we're gonna use a fit point spline. I'm gonna go from here to there. And then I'm gonna use curvature continuity between these two. And you'll notice that it doesn't actually work. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo curvature continuity. And let's try that spline one more time. So we're gonna go from here to here, hit Escape. I'm gonna activate this handle, and then I'm gonna try curvature continuity one more time between these two. That looks a little bit better, and you can see the result 
essentially matches the shape of the, the underlying geometry. So I'm gonna hit escape to get off my constraint tool. Then I wanna start to mess around with this shape. Now it could be kind of hard to see when all these bodies are here. So I'm gonna turn on curvature combs and curvature combs will help give me an idea of the curvature that we're creating. And what we don't wanna see is we don't wanna see this inflection point where the curvature combs actually go past the, uh, the spline that we're creating. And the reason for that is because it's, it's not gonna create good geometry for us. What we really wanna do is we wanna shorten the tangency influence and then change its direction. So even though we have a little bit of an inflection here, it's not crossing over the spline, which will um, ultimately give us a little bit better result. Now, this is not a drastic change, but what we are doing is we're creating a little bit of a change in direction here, and we're widening that gap to the intake. Maybe it's required, maybe it's not. We might have been able to just keep that edge, but this is essentially the process of how we would go about it. So we're gonna finish that sketch, and note that this curve is way back here. And this curve is on the side. So in order to combine them in 3D, we need to make another sketch. Now in Fusion 360, it doesn't really matter what plane we select, it just needs a new sketch to contain the projected geometry. So project include, intersection curve, and what we're gonna do is select our side view and our front view, and you'll notice that it's building this red curve in 3D. Now if we did everything right, it should attach to this edge down here with tangency or curvature continuity, and it should meet that point right there. Now, if we did everything right, we now have a third sketch that we created that has that 3D projected curve exactly where we want it. From here, what we can do is we can build out the rest of the surface, however far we wanna take that shape back. And this is where we have to decide, do we want to patch this entire thing or do we wanna just section up a piece of it? And that's really gonna come down to what you're designing and what you want uh, to do for your design but I'm gonna go ahead and create yet another side sketch. Um, if you have anything pre-selected like a sketch curve, you might need to uh, do a control Z to undo. But essentially what I'm gonna do is project this edge and this edge, and I'm gonna draw a line between those. I'm gonna to try to stay you know, roughly close to this angle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then what I wanna do is try to trim it. So this is my trim tool, and I wanna get rid of everything inside there, and then I can hide my trim tool. So now I need to rebuild this little surface. This, this is where things could get ugly, and we really won't know until we try, but we're gonna loft from there to um, these two, and the guide rails are gonna be this upper edge, which gets tricky because it's a little bit longer, and a second rail is gonna be this lower edge. Now, we don't have any tangency that we can drive here, but what we really want to focus on is rail two and profile two. So rail two, we wanna make sure we at least have tangency and profile two, we want tangency. We want it to blend into that. Now we could try curvature continuity, but again, sometimes that gets a bit ugly depending on what your criteria is. This looks like it's working okay. So I'm gonna say okay. And what we've done here, if I use control and four to hide the edges, we should have a nice smooth patch that we created. Even though it's its own surface there, we can see the lighting that's going across, it looks pretty good. And it's a little bit wider, if we look at it from the front, it's a little bit wider than that surface that goes underneath. Remember that's that face copy, which we kept. It's going back and we can end up trimming that wherever we need it, but we kept that little copy so that we have continuity going through there. So that looks uh, looks pretty good so far. Let's go ahead and go to the side view, control S to do a quick save. And what we wanna do at this point is we wanna start stitching stuff back together. So we're, we're gonna need this little piece and that and this piece here. And all of those, everywhere we see a green edge, means that things are getting stitched together, which is a good sign. We're gonna say, okay. And that should leave us with a single body here. So that single body is gonna be the removable canopy or cockpit. And we have the intake opening that's a little bit wider and it all sort of blends back. It's exactly what we wanted. Now what we have to do is we have to build the rest of that intake track. 
And the way that we're going to do that is we need an extrude, or we need a surface for that to terminate on. Now, if I bring back, let's see, one of these images has the opening here. Let's go ahead and look at this one. All right, so this is part of the intake track, this gray area, and that actually wraps in and underneath here. So essentially what that looks like is a flat surface. So the way that I'm going to approach this is to go back to one of my earlier sketches, go to a side view here, and this bottom edge here, I'm going to extrude that out, and that's going to be the sort of the terminating face that we're going to use. So we're going to go to extrude, make sure I turn off chaining. I want to grab this bottom edge here and just bring it all the way out. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to trim that surface. So I can hide the canopy because I don't need to see it right now, but I'm going to use trim. A trim tool will be the fuselage and the area that we're going to remove is that little piece on the outside. So that instantly trims that for me. The next thing that we're going to do is we need to trim the inside. So the front corner of this, that point, is going to be the bottom section of our air intake. So we want it to start to taper in in a way. And because of the trim surface, we've got a point here right in the middle. And if we bring back the cockpit, you can see exactly that that point is intersecting where the intake portion is. So we know that we're going to be inside of that and then wrapping back around. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to create a sketch. Now this is a plane, essentially it's a straight line. So we can sketch directly on it if we want to. Uh, because it was a horizontal line, it's actually going to be the same as sketching on the top plane. If it wasn't, then we would need to be kind of careful. But in this case, it gives us the boundaries or the extents, which is really helpful. So I'm going to use a fit point spline. I'm going to find where that point was on the chassis or on the fuselage. Looks to be about right there. And I'm going to just bring this in. Hit escape. And I want to make sure that it's tangent up front here. So I'm going to select those two, make them tangent. And then again, from my top, basically what we're doing is we're just blending this in. Now, from here, it actually ends up wrapping back around and going to the center. So we would want to look at exactly what that looks like. This is the copy of that face, that little sliver for where the canopy is sort of separated. And essentially what we want to do is we want to mimic that shape. And I'm going to do this with a second spline, and I'm just going to go actually just to the origin. I'm going to set this line as vertical so that the green control handle, we can make those vertical or horizontal. Uh, sometimes if that doesn't work, you might need to get it a little bit closer. I can select those points, make them vertical with each other. I want to carry tangency across these two splines. And then I can start to play around with the handles and, and adjust the shape and move it around if I need to. But what this is going to be is a trim. So we're going to use that as a trim tool. So select the spline and then get rid of everything on the inside. So if we look at what we have so far, essentially what we have is this front edge and the upper edge is going to, the surface is going to carry along that upper edge. This bottom edge, it's going to wrap inside and around. However, we need to remember that what ends up happening here is it's not going to just continue and follow this along. It's going to wrap back inside. And this is where we need another projected curve. So let's go ahead and let's rename this uh, canopy, make it a little bit easier. And let's think about how this edge now needs to wrap inside in 3D. And this is where those projected curves can come in handy. So what I want to do from my side view is first, I want to figure out where this point is. And we use the origin, but it's actually below the origin. So I'm going to hit P on the keyboard, and I'm going to just bring in this line here, which gives me that reference point. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to know where this is going to terminate. Now, if it just continues to follow that trajectory, then it's actually going to probably come through the canopy. But uh, what we're going to do is, again, P to project. I'm going to project this edge so I have my tangency reference. And I'm going to just draw a line that follows it. It's either parallel or collinear. And then this edge right here, I don't want to be vertical. I want it to come back at an angle. 
This is not going to be part of this equation right now, so I'm going to make it construction, and then I'm going to finish the sketch. But I do need that reference because now I'm going to sketch on the top plane. And from the top, we know that we're going from this edge. So again, P to project it. And we know that we're going to this point right here. So I'm going to project that vertex. And then we're going to create a spline that has tangency, goes from there to there. Now the spline itself, again, this is going to be vertical. We can select the endpoints, make them vertical with each other. This is going to have tangency here. And this is going to be the upper curve. Now, if we did everything right, we can create a third sketch. So once more, pick whatever plane you want. And then we're going to use project include and intersection curve. So we're going to intersect this curve and this curve, which should give us that nice curve in 3D. Now, in reality, what we would probably want to do is build out the edge that goes from here to here. But it's probably not needed. So let's try it without it first. So what I want to do is I want to loft from here. But notice that it's using those as two separate profiles. And what I want is I want them to be the same profile. So it could be problematic because of that 3D curve. So let's try to go from this bottom edge as one profile to this top edge. And again, you can see that it's trying to use those as two separate profiles. So what that's telling me is that this is not going to work unless I make that curve on the side plane. So I'm going to create sketch. And I can either bring that side reference edge, this one that we used, I can just project it in. And that way we're using the exact same edge, or I could redraw it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select loft. We're going to loft from the front to the back. So we want to make sure that we're going from this edge to that curve. And then the guide theoretically should be this bottom and should be this top. But you can see here, it's not working. Now it's telling me that the rail is not smooth. Something about the cut that was used, which we know that's not true because we used tangency when we were, um, when we were cutting that. We could go back and find the sketch that was used for that split, this one here. We could delete that tangency and we could use curvature continuity to see if that maybe helps it out. And then hide that. So this is some, kind of the thing that you're going to run into when you're using these surfacing tools. I, I found it to be somewhat inconsistent, unfortunately. Um, so sometimes it will not like that profile if you use tangency, but it will be okay if you use curvature continuity. You can see this upper rail, it just does not um, it does not want to use. So it says that the rail, is, it misses the profile, which shouldn't be the case because again, we sort of used, um, used everything that we had in order to make that work. So let's take uh, this section here and let's figure out why those are not connecting. So one way that we could do this is we could sort of abandon the tangency there. We can take this sketch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the sketch and under create project include, I'm going to select include 3D geometry, which will put that edge in this same sketch. And theoretically, it shouldn't have a problem using that. So what I'm going to do is for my rails, again, we're going to use the bottom, which now is smooth. And then for the top, you can see there now it works out. Unfortunately, what this means is we're not going to be able to drive tangency on the top. Again, you kind of have to pick and choose your battle sometimes. We can still drive curvature continuity on this front edge, which is the important one. Then everything else, this doesn't really matter because we're going to blend that corner. And we can say, okay, there. The last little bit that we want to do is we want to carry this upper little piece around. And because that's going to be hidden, the way that we can do this is with a sweep. It's not going to have tangency if we use sweep because right now there is no way to drive tangency off of a, an edge. But we can simply just sweep it around there. Uh, we do have to be mindful of the fact that the sweep itself, uh, again, is not going to be tangent at the midline. 
Uh, if you do need it to be tangent, then you'll have to go and create a little curve at the intersection and you need to do a loft. So again, you kind of have to pick and choose what you need or what's required for your design. So for me, I'm gonna do project include, I'm gonna project that point. I'm gonna use my line tool and I'll just create a little line here. And now I should be able to do a loft going from here to here. And then this should work as a guide. I'm gonna use direction for the one at the midline and I'm gonna use tangent for this one and say, okay. And then I wanna stitch all this stuff together. So just grab all these surfaces and say, okay. Now, if we bring back the canopy and hide our edges, what we should see is now we've got that sort of intake shape. Now it flares out here because that's what we decided we, we wanted to do. It flares out there to get that little crease and the intake sort of opens up and blends in, all right? So everything that we've set out to do, we've done. There are a few other little things that we can do. Let's do a quick save to make sure we don't lose anything. And then let's talk about filleting this edge here. Now it may or may not work, uh, this is the first time that I've gone this far with this model, so let's just give it a shot. I'm going to do a variable fillet. This one back here, I'm going to set at 0.25, and you can see that it does start to create a fillet. Let's try a smaller value. Remember that we're working on a very small model, uh, so these values may or may not work. You can see that it has problems once it gets to here. If I set a point there, and a point at the end, making sure that those values are zero, then I'm still not getting anything. So unfortunately, this, this does not look like it's going to work, probably based on the size. What this means is that if I want that smooth, then I'm probably going to have to trim away a little bit and blend it with a loft. Not really gonna be very uh, interested in doing that in this video. I just wanted to get uh, get something in here. Uh, let's let's finish off this area a little bit more. So I'm going to create a sketch on the side, P to project and include. I'm going to just bring in these two points here, L for my line tool. I'm going to finish the sketch and I'm going to patch this area. Make sure that enable chaining is turned off because I manually want to select these. I'm going to stitch them together so that it's all one surface. I am going to modify, add a fillet, constant radius. Actually, this one will be variable as well. I'm gonna do variable, blend it there, and then down here, it's gonna to go to zero. And if we want to round any of this stuff off, we certainly can, but the last bit of this is going to be mirroring everything. So we're gonna create a mirror, select bodies. I'm gonna mirror this body and this one mirror it across the mid plane. If we select join, it should stitch them together automatically. All the rest of these, I'm gonna right click and remove to get them out of here. So that is the basic fuselage shape. Now, obviously we didn't do anything with wings. We didn't do anything with um, any of the other details, but now if we sort of just change the appearance, I'm gonna go to paint, glossy. I'll make the canopy part red. I'll make the other part white just so we can uh, very easily see the difference between them. Uh, so now we've got that, that canopy piece on top. It's got that little bit of crease to it. We've got the air intakes and we've got the nose cone. From here, if you want to continue to play around with this model, the next step would be to define the wings. Now, you have to remember that wings on these things are removable. So there will be a small flat section where the wings meet and uh, those wings will then be removable. Same thing with all the tail fins. So that way it's just a bit smaller to assemble and I assume to travel with. So keep that in mind, but that would be a, next, a good next step. But remember that we don't exactly have all the references. We've got pictures at isometric views and we've got this sort of top, uh, you know, this top shape. But I think so far we've done a pretty good job matching what's here. So I think it's a great starting point if you wanna to continue to play around with it. Uh, once again, make sure that you take a look in the description of the video because the link to the supplier for, uh, for these is inside of there. You can make sure to check out any pictures they have, information that they have, um, if you want to build one on your own. As, as I mentioned, these, 
thing, at least this one here, the Rebel Max, looks to be pretty huge. It's probably about eight or nine feet. Uh, so that's a, a, a pretty sizable remote control airplane. But at this point, I think that's as far as I'm going to take it. I will put a link to this data set at the very end of the description. So uh, if you had any trouble and you want to play around with this one, you certainly can. You can go ahead and download that. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.